In this video, I'm going to talk about what end-to-end uh, -end testing is and how it might be useful in a real-world uh, project or in an Ionic application. Uh, so just recently, I released a video on unit testing in Ionic. Um, again, that was a very high-level overview of unit testing uh, where I looked at this application that we're looking at on screen now and how that might be useful in a real-world situation, why you might want to unit test and I guess the, the general structure of what unit testing will look like in your application. Now, as I did in that video, with this video, I'm also not going to cover the, the setting up of end-to-end -end testing. Um, I have some material on that already that I can link to, which goes through uh, setting up end-to-end -end testing, running some end-to-end -end tests. Uh, in this video, I would want to just show you uh, some end-to-end -end tests that I have for a particular application that I'm working on. And again, talk through about you know, what they are uh, in general, why they're useful, and um, yeah, to show you an example of what it actually looks like. So on screen now, I have my unit tests up from the, the last video. Now, I don't want to dive into unit testing again, because I'll probably spend too long rambling on about it. Uh, but just to recap really quickly, a unit test tests individual chunks of code and ensures that uh, those individual chunks of code work in isolation. And so we can create those tests, we can run them, and then you know, our command line here is going to tell us if all of our tests are passing or not. If we break some functionality that used to work, we're going to we're going to know about it. And so unlike a unit test, which tests things small chunks of code in isolation, an end-to-end -end test uh, will test your application from end to end. So it's a more, I guess, a user-centric view of, of testing. It tests it like a, a real person. It's kind of like uh, having a, a robot human test your application for you. Uh, it's going to test how pages link together, if certain things are on screen when they should be. Uh, so unlike a unit test, which is testing small chunks of the code itself, end-to-end -end test tests the application as a whole. Now, before I actually show you the end-to-end -end tests themselves, which you can see up in the top left here, I have a little end-to-end -end folder. I'm going to run them uh, so you can see what happens when you do run your end-to-end -end testing suite. And so I have this application uh, being served right now. And that's important for this end-to-end -end test to work because um, it is actually going to access the, the application running. So I'm going to cancel out of my unit tests here, and then I'm going to run npm run e2e. And again, this isn't something that's built into Ionic applications by default. You will need to set that up. Uh, so for the easiest way to do that, just check out my, uh, it was a recent video where I talked about using this um, a GitHub repository, which has unit and end-to-end -end testing set up by default. Uh, so that's probably the easiest way you can get up and running. So when I run this command here, that's going to trigger my um, end-to-end -end tests. It uses a site called Karma to run them through the browser. And you can see the browser pop up there and things are flashing around and changing. The application is getting reloaded, modals are popping up. Um, so this is right now that's testing my application kind of like a real person would test it, but it's all automated. And so if we look at the output here, we can see which ones are passing and which ones aren't. And so this is a real application that I'm working on now. So this is currently in progress. So uh, the general flow of how I'm creating this, as I mentioned in the, the last video, I'm using test-driven development. So basically what I do is I, I first run end-to-end -end test to test some behavior that I'm trying to implement. So if we take one of these tests as an example, uh, this passing end-to-end -end test says that it should display a list of notices on the page. So that's a functionality that I'm trying to create. So from that, I'd write an end-to-end -end test, which is then going to, of course, fail, and then in order to get that end-to-end -end test working, I need to start writing some code. Uh, but to write code, I need to have unit tests that cover that code. So I write a unit test for a portion of what's going to make that functionality work for that end-to-end -end test. Then I write that code. I repeat that process with the unit test. I write a unit test. I write some code. I write a unit test. I write some code until the point where this end-to-end -end test passes. And then I can move on to the next thing. And so you can see right here, I have some passing end-to-end -end tests. Uh, but then I've got this one that is failing here. It says after adding a new notice, it, uh, a new notice, it should be displayed at the top of the notices list. Uh, so this clearly isn't a unit test. It's not testing some individual chunk of code. It's testing this you know, functionality that's going to be relying on a lot of different things. So I have to first obviously add a new notice. So I have to launch the page that's adding the notice, and then we have to navigate away from that page and we have to check that the list where the notices are displayed contains that new notice. 
So obviously that is a, it's a reasonably complex operation. And so if we jump into this E2E folder now, I have uh, my various um, end-to-end uh, spec files here. And so if we take a look at the notices one, you can see the various uh, end-to-end -end tests I have. And uh, what you may notice right away is it looks very similar to the unit testing setup. Uh, so it's a bit simpler because we're not creating the uh, the testing environment that we did for the unit tests. We used um, Angular Angular's test bed to create a sort of isolated testing environment for our unit tests. Uh, whereas with the end-to-end -end tests, it's really just accessing our application as it is. And then for each of these tests, we're kind of just triggering behavior that you know, a user would. So if we take a look at um, what was the one we were interested in? So after adding a new notice, uh, it should be displayed at the top of the notice list. Uh, so that's this one here. So in this test, what we're saying to do, um, and it's also worth noting, I have a before each uh, block here that says well, we should run this code before each test. So every time uh, before I start the test, I navigate to the notices page. Uh, and then we run this code. So the first thing I'm doing is uh, getting the add notice button and clicking it. And now I have this separated out uh, into page objects. I'm not going to get into what they are in this video too much. Uh, but basically, I just have these separate files here that allow me to retrieve the various components that I need to access. Uh, since we're sort of grabbing references to things by, say, CSS attributes, uh, it can be a bit awkward uh, in our tests if we then change the CSS and then our tests fail because you know we're not getting the add notice button correctly. Uh, so by separating that out into its own page object here, uh, we can just call get add notice button. And then if we ever need to update that in the future, we can just change it here. And then anything that's using it will be updated as well. Uh, but again, it's not really the point of this tutorial. I just mainly want to get across the point of an end-to-end -end test. So we get the add notice button on the notices page and we click it. And so this is just telling the thing that's running our tests, uh, which is a protractor. So it's telling that uh, to click that button and then it's telling the browser to wait uh, for 500 milliseconds. And then we grab the title uh, input field, uh, which is the field we're using to, you know, to give a title to the notice we're trying to create. And then we call the send keys function to send that some data. So this is literally like the user typing in some input now. And then we call the, or we grab the get save button. Uh, we get the save button with the get save button function there, and we click that. Then we put the browser to sleep again for another 500 milliseconds, and then we test uh, the thing that we want to test. So again, it's that same sort of, you know, that AAA concept, arrange, act, assert. Uh, it's just a little bit different to our unit tests. So rather than testing the code itself, we're kind of triggering these actions that a user would. Uh, so again, to recap, click the add notice button, wait, input test title into the title field, click the save button, wait, and then check that that notice is now at the top of the notices list. Uh, so to do that, we get the notice list items, get the first item, we get that first item's text, and then we expect it to contain test title because that's the input we used here. So if I run that end-to-end uh, -end test again now, hopefully with that in mind, you'll be able to kind of visualize these tests happening as the browser pops up. See if you can spot where it's sending the keys to um, the modal. So that last test that just happened there. So we launched the modal a few times because we we're testing various different things. Like we were testing that they could launch the modal in this one. Uh, we're testing that they can uh, close the modal with this one. Uh, and then we we're testing that they can you know, add the input to the modal and save it and that it would be added to the notices list. So in that last test, you could see the, the test title um, just got typed into that uh, title field uh, uh, that was in the modal. And so by writing these end-to-end -end tests, we can, you know, we can catch things that we would miss with unit tests. So especially when we're talking about you know, how things work together as a whole. Uh, so I haven't got to debugging why this particular test isn't working yet. Uh, it's something that I need to look into now. But already throughout developing this application, an end-to-end end -end test has picked up something that I've missed with my unit tests. Uh, so if I was just relying on the unit tests alone, uh, there could have been some bugs left over in there that I missed, or at least went missed for a longer period of time. And again, same as the unit test, just because you have end-to-end -end tests doesn't mean that your program's going to work under all circumstances. This just is testing a specific set of circumstances. But if you are using uh, a test-driven development approach where you're, you're kind of 
first defining the behavior that you want, writing a test for that, and then implementing it. Uh, if you write your test that way, you know, you're going to be covering, you're going to be covering a lot of your application. You can be reasonably confident it does um, what you want it to do, uh, as opposed to writing the test, say, after the fact, uh, where you're sort of just picking and choosing what areas of the application that you want to test. You might miss you know, some of that critical functionality that is, is the core functionality of what your app should do. Um, in a way, writing end-to-end -end tests with a sort of test-driven development or behavior-driven development approach, uh, you're kind of writing your requirements into the tests and then verifying that they work. Okay, so again, this was just intended to be a very high-level overview of an end-to-end -end test in a, in a real uh, sort of environment and a real application you know, to see what, what it looks like um, and, again, how it might be uh, helpful. Uh, so I hope this has helped demonstrate that. Uh, if you do want more material on unit tests and end-to-end -end tests, uh, I've got plenty of articles on my website. Uh, I have a couple more videos on this sort of stuff. And uh, as I mentioned in the last video, there's tons of material out there for testing. It's something that's been around for a long time. So yeah, just do some Google searches, read about Jasmine and Karma and Protractor, uh, specifically in the context of Angular uh, would be helpful, but just in general, uh, knowing the general concepts of testing, uh, even if it's completely unrelated to even JavaScript in general. Uh, will help you write good tests. And one final note I want to hit, uh, which I also mentioned in the last video, is that testing is difficult. Uh, it's something that takes a long time to learn. It's something that I still have a lot more to learn about. You're not going to be able to write good tests right away. Uh, as you test more, you're going to get better at doing it. You're going to learn better ways to test things. And like just development in general, uh, it's a skill that's learned over time and you will get better at it but it's definitely something worth investing some time to, even though it may seem like a lot of you know, annoying hard work at the beginning. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.